Hey guys, and welcome back. So in today's video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be hooking up our graphical client to our server so that we can send information back and forth. And ideally at the end of this video, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have two rectangles on each client. So we'll have like two clients running. And when you move the rectangle on one client, it moves on the other and vice versa, okay? So you guys will get the idea when we go through, but there's a little bit of work we have to do and we're gonna be modifying a few things within a lot of the files we've already created. So just make sure you guys are paying attention. And again, if anything is going wrong, feel free to download all of the code off of techwithtim.net. Uh, it'll be available there and it'll be exactly the same code that I'm writing right now, okay? Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is in this network class, we're just gonna delete a few things. So this testing stuff, we don't need anymore. Um, this print statement for the self.id, we don't need that. And we're actually gonna change this self.id to be self.pause, okay? And you guys will see why we're doing that in a second. Um, and we're gonna add one quick method in here and we're just gonna say define get pause, okay? And all we're gonna do here is just return self.pause. All right, and again, we'll you'll see why we're doing that, but I just don't wanna have to come back to this network class, so we'll do that right now. Okay, so I'm from inside our client now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import this network class because we're gonna use it in here. So we're gonna say from network uh, import network and then in our main uh, function down here what we're going to do is actually above player we're going to say n equals network okay like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to say start pause equals n dot get pause so essentially why I'm doing this is because when we first connect to our server, what I want to happen is I want it to return to each of our clients the starting position of their character, right? Or of their cube, okay? Because it's gonna depend where they're starting based on if they're player one or if they're player two. So then on the client side, what we're gonna do is when we initially connect to the server, which is what we're doing when we create this network object, we're connecting to the server we're gonna get that starting position and then for creating our own player, we're gonna use that starting position to determine like where we're starting. So the position is gonna come in as a tuple, all right? And we'll be coding all this on the server side in a second, but it's easier just to go through each file rather than going back and forth. It's gonna come through as a tuple that looks something like this. So it'll be like 50, 100, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna read this tuple in because it's actually gonna come in as a string, like we're. Uh, you'll see how it comes in. We're gonna get the two aspects of it. It's so like the X value and the Y value. And then we're gonna use that inside of this player um, initialization to like set the initial position. So that uh, reminds me, what we're gonna be doing when we're sending information to the server is we're gonna send it using string data, right? And that's what we were doing in the last video is we were sending everything with strings. So we were sending like hello, and then we were decoding it and encoding it. Now. This is not the only way we can send information. We can actually send information with objects and I'm gonna show you the advantage of doing that in the next video, but for now we're just gonna send strings. So since we're gonna be sending strings, um, the strings that I wanna send are positions, okay? I want to, from each client, send the current client's position to the server. The server is gonna get that position, update it on the server side, and then send the other client's position back to um, the client. You guys will see how it works in a second. Uh, actually, let's see if I can do a quick drawing to illustrate this because it'll make things a bit easier. Okay, let's, um, I don't know why I had this. Let's delete that. Okay, so let's do a quick drawing. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have client one, and excuse me because I'm drawing this with a mouse, and client two, okay? So this is gonna be one, and this is gonna be two. All right, this, we'll do it as a red box, is gonna be our server. And on the server, what we're gonna do is we're gonna store positions. So we'll say like one has position like one, two, okay? Sorry, this is hard with the mouse guys. And then client two will have position like three and one, okay? So it's gonna store these positions. So what's gonna happen is when we initially connect, client one is gonna go to the server, it's gonna connect to it, and then it's gonna be sent back the starting position for the client, okay? So it's gonna be said, okay, so you're client one, so that means you're gonna start at position one, two. Client two, it's gonna connect. It's gonna say, okay, we're client two, so I need to send client two's position, so let's send that back, all right? Now, let's say we've already connected, client one's there, client two's there, and we've set their starting positions. What we're gonna do next is, now we're gonna continually call to the client and update the position. So what we're gonna do is say, let's it's say we're working with client one, okay? Um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna send its position to the server, so it's gonna say, um, let's just say pause, okay? It's sending its current position. Let's say that position is like four, uh, five. Sorry, this is really hard with the mouse. Okay, four, five. What's gonna happen here is we're gonna say, okay, so you're updating your position. 
So then it's going to go in here. It's going to say, okay, client one will update your position to be four, five, like that, okay? And then what it's going to do is instead of sending back the same position, because we already know what the position is, it's going to send back the position of client two. So it's going to send three, one. And then on here, we can draw that client so that it looks like um, it's moving, right? So we're getting, we're sending our information and then in return, we're receiving the other client's information. Now the same thing works here with client two. So if client two connects, right? And it's sending information, it's gonna send its position. Let's say it sends the position one, three, okay? That's its updated position. So this is gonna change to be one and three. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, okay, well, we don't need clients two's position. We need clients one. So what's client one position? Well, that is four five. So let's send four five over to client two. And then on client two, we can draw four five. So you'll see um, they'll simultaneously be moving. I hope that makes sense. I just want to draw it out for you so you guys know what I'm about to do in this video. Okay, perfect. Now, the only thing is we need to send these positions as strings. So we're actually gonna to have to implement two helper methods so that we can convert those positions, which are gonna to be tuples into strings. And then we can also uh, read the string into a tuple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say define, and I wanna remember what I call this one. We'll say this one is read underscore position, which means we're gonna take a string value and we're just gonna read the string in. So we'll say str equals str dot split, and we'll split it at a comma, okay? And you guys will see how this works in a second. And then what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna return the int of string zero, so str zero, okay? comma int of str one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a string in that looks something like this. It'd be like 45 comma 67, okay? Um, in, in string value, 45, 67. We're gonna split it, which means we're gonna get a list that has the string 45 and the string 67. And then we're just gonna convert those to ints and return them as a tuple. So now we get that converted to something that looks like this, which is useful information that we can actually use, okay? So that's what read pause is going to do, but we need to make one more, which is going to convert that position into a string. So we're going to say uh, make underscore position. And in here, what we're going to have is we're going to take a tuple. So let's we'll say tup standing for tuple. And what we'll do here is we'll say, um, let's see here, return uh, tup, actually str of tup zero. And then we're gonna add that comma in. So sorry, I'm butchering my typing right now. Comma plus str of top one. And I hope that makes sense how we do that. So that's returning the string value. So we're reading pause and making pause. Um, and that's all we need to do for those helper functions. Okay, so that means though, that when we get the position initially from our server, it's gonna come in in that string value, right? It's gonna look like 45, 67. So we need to convert that. So what we'll do is we'll say, read pause and we'll just put that around end dot get pause because it's going to return to us that string position so we'll read it in and now what we're going to do is for our player we're going to say start pause zero and start pause one okay and what this is going to do is just set it to the initial start position we're going to code all the server stuff after it'll start making a lot more sense okay now what we also need to do is we need to create a second player because we're gonna have to draw the first player and the second player on the screen, right? So we're gonna say P2 equals, and we're literally just gonna copy this, except um, for start position, we're just gonna put it as zero, zero for right now. And we'll update that in a second, okay? So we have P, P2, um, and for now, that's what we'll do. Actually, let's, we can continue working in here so that we don't have to do anything else in here after. We'll just code the server side. So what we'll do now is we're gonna send our current position to the server, right? That's like the algorithm we've developed. Essentially, we are when we connect, we're gonna get the starting position, we're gonna set that starting position, and then every time after that, so like every time the frame updates, we're going to send our position and then get the other person's position. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say um, p2 pause is gonna be equal to n dot send, okay? And we're gonna send make position of and then what we're gonna have to do in here is it's a little sketchy, but we're gonna do p dot x, p dot y. Now, right, because that's the position of our player, the x and the y coordinate, we're putting it in tuple form. We're sending it to the function make position, which is gonna turn it into a string, and then we're sending it to the server, right? Okay, awesome. So I think that makes sense. And then what we're gonna do simply is for p2, we're going to update is its position. So we'll say p2 dot x is gonna be equal to, uh, actually, 
n2.send, but we will, what we're gonna have to put around here, sorry, is make pause read pause because right it's coming in as a string so we need to convert this into an actual position so p2 pause is going to be p2 position 0 and then p2.y is going to be equal to p2 p2 pause 1 okay now the only thing that's left to do here is what do you call it draw p2 and update p2's rectangle so what we're going to do now is in the redraw window down here we're going to put p2 we're going to go to redraw window we're going to say player 2 here and then we're going to do player to dot draw window because again it's going to be a player object so that'll be fine and then last thing to do is just update the rectangle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say p2 dot update and we're going to go to player object now we're just going to add this one function that is define update and then so you see i just made like self dot rect equals x y with height and then in here i'm just going to say self dot update like this okay um, so I know these might be getting a bit confusing but we're almost finished I just gotta do the server side and then we'll recap through everything what we've done explain things I just kind of have to get this content out uh, okay so define update so what we're doing again here is before we just had this line of code here um, so we're just replacing that with an update method uh, that's pretty straightforward I hope that makes sense to you guys and that's just again so when we change the X and we change the Y value of p2 directly then we are updating the rectangle so when we draw it to the screen it's in the correct position Okay, so I believe that's all I have to do for the client side. So now it's time to go to the server side, and the server side is pretty straightforward. Now the server needs to keep track of the positions, right? It needs to hold player one's position and player's two position um, consistently. So we can decide if we want to store that, let's say, like on a hard drive, or if we want to store that in memory. Now in our case, it's not a lot of information, so we're just going to store it in the memory of the server, right? So what we'll do for that is we're going to create a list, and we're going to say pause equals and just a blank list. And this list is going to hold the positions of our players. Now actually, that reminds me, we're going to put two tuples in here. And these are going to represent, sorry, the starting positions of our players. So we'll start with 0, 0. And like 100 100 so player one will start at 0 0 player two will start at 100 100 okay and that's all we're gonna do for that little list there and then what we're gonna do down here uh, well this while loop is we're gonna keep track of how many players have connected in our case we only want two to connect right um, and then we need to keep track of well those players so we're gonna say is we're gonna say current player equals zero now this is because when we connect we're gonna add one to this so that when we go back into this function, it'll be, you, you guys will see how it works. But essentially, every time we create a new connection, so every time this we accept a new connection, we're going to add one to our current player. So we'll actually do it at the bottom of the while loop. We'll say current player plus equals one. This is just to keep track of which player we're using so that we know what position to update, what position to send to that player based on the connection, right? Okay, so keep track of current player. And now what we're going to do is when we start this new thread, so this threaded client, we're also going to pass another argument, which is going to be the current player. So instead of just passing connection, we're also going to pass player in here, okay? Uh, current player. Like that, okay? Because that's going to be important information to know. All right, so we're actually almost finished. We just got to update a few things. So let's actually grab um, these two methods from our client class or client file and throw them onto server here. So we're just going to put them right above position because we're going to need to use them. Read pause and make pause. So now when we initially connect to our player, right? This is what happens when we initially connect. The first thing that's sent is this encoded uh, message that is connected. Now in our case, what we want to send is we want to send the starting position. So how do we do that? Well, we know what player we are. We're either player zero or we're either player one, right? Because we only have two players. When we start with player zero, after player zero connects, then we do player one, right? So what we'll do is we're gonna send pause player. Now that won't work because it's just a tuple, right? We need to first convert that to a string and then encode that string and send it. So let's actually go back here. I wanna keep this string.encode. So string.encode and we'll say make underscore or uh, pause. And then we'll just put pause player in here and what that'll do is it'll convert it into a string for us and then it'll send that uh, to the player for us right and then they'll read that string in convert it to a position and update the position accordingly okay making sense hope so okay so that's how that works for player now the only thing we need to change now is what information we are 
sending um, every time this loop is running, right? Every time we receive something from the player, we want to send back the other player's position. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say con.receive.decode. So we'll get rid of this for now. And then what we're going to say is we're going to turn this data into uh, like readable, a readable tuple, right? So to do that, uh, we are going to use the read position method that we've already created or function. So say read pause con.receive and we'll turn that into from that string like this, right? Or whatever it was like 45, 67, we'll turn that into something that looks like this so that we can actually use it. Okay. So now that we have that, it's turned into that. What we're going to do is we're going to update our current player's position. So we're going to say pause player equals data, right? Because this is the position they sent to us. So let's update it on the server. Uh, so yeah, so it's updated information. Okay, sweet. So we've done that. Now all that's left to do is send the other player's position back to uh, our client. So to do that, what we can do is simply say reply equals, and we're just going to say pause, or actually, uh, let's not do it up here. Let's do it down here. Okay, we're going to say if player equals equals one. So if we're player one, we're going to send player zero position, right? So we'll say reply equals, and then pause player uh, or not pause, not, not player zero, sorry. And then else we're going to send, so we'll say reply equals pause one. Okay. So if we're player one, we send player zero position. If we're player zero, we send players one position, right? Like I was talking about with that little algorithm we're going to use. Okay. And then instead of saying received and sending actually, yeah, we can say received reply, sending reply, or we'll say received data, sending reply. That should work fine. Okay. Uh, now what we'll do is we're going to send all the reply, but the thing is our reply, we need to first convert into a string. So to do that, we're going to say make underscore pause, right? That function we've already created. And then that should actually be about it. Now I'm probably made a mistake or two here, but let's just test this out and see if everything's working. So let's start by running the server and then let's run two clients and see if we can connect or if there's any errors. Okay. So we've connected with client one. Let's run client two and let's see what happens. So I'm on client one right now and you can see that when I move my green square, it moves on the other client. Okay. Let's go to the other one. And when you look at this, when I move it on here, it moves on the other client. So we have successfully set up and connected our two clients together. Now, the only thing I want to change quickly is just the color of these so that we know who is who, like which square am I? Um, so to do this, we're just simply going to go, uh, we'll actually close the server class. Otherwise you're going to run into an issue or server instance, whatever it is, we'll go to client. And instead of having the same color here, we're just going to change this to be 255 for player two. And now I want to show you what happens because some of you are probably going to be confused with what's about to happen here, but it's kind of interesting. So let's run server. Let's run client one. Let's run client two. Now notice that these colors are inverted. Now, can anyone think of why that might be? So green, right, is going to be uh, your current player. So right now I'm on here, I'm on this where my mouse is, and I'm moving the green square that's near the middle of the screen, okay? But notice on the other screen, it's moving the red square. That's because on your client, it's unique to you. So on your client, you are green and red is the other person. Meanwhile, if I go to this client and I start moving, see green is me and red is the other guy, right? And he's not currently moving. Now, if I wanted to move these at the same time, I would just have to be running these on different computers or I would have to change like the arrow keys to move them. And that's just because obviously, right? Like if I'm pressing the arrow keys on here, it's not gonna work on this client. But if I were to load up my laptop and try doing it on there, um, this would work fine as well. So anyways, that has been this video. In the next video, we're going to do a more complex version of this, not just moving squares around. We're going to do like a full game, sending objects, uh, get a lot more advanced. This is just the very beginning, just touching the tip of the iceberg or whatever you want to call it. So I hope you guys are excited about that and I will see you again in the next video.